science just simply cannot explain this. Hello, how are you guys doing today? We are back with another creepy crawly series. My name's Ashley, if you're new around here. I'm a scientist with a major in soil science and a minor in plant science. And on this series, we look at crop circles, creepy plants, haunted forests, and everything paranormal. With these paranormal plants, what we do is we apply a little bit of plant science, soil science, to try to debunk the myths, but some of these are unexplainable. So if you're looking for more videos like this, they do come out every Friday. Be sure to smash that subscribe button so you can get all the creepy crawly content going forward. And if you're just here for gardening, then hi, I'm your entertainment for your Friday night. Now let's get started. So there was a recent article released. It was sometime in December 2019, and the study took place also very recently as well. It initially started off with scientists trying to look at calcium release within plants, but then they started to notice some other creepy things starting to happen. So they dug a little bit deeper and they found out that plants have a supersonic scream. Yes, a supersonic scream when exposed to pain or stress. Now, you might be horrified, and as a gardener and a plant enthusiast, I myself am horrified because, let's face it, we've all forgotten to water, we've all cut off some branches because they didn't look pretty and so we are all technically plant torturers and we very well right now in this room could have screaming that we can't hear but not every animal and species cannot hear this there are animals out there that can and they include mice bats, and most insects. Now, if that doesn't creep you out, <laughs> just think of the poor mice walking around on the streets that all they can hear is plant screams from all the terrible plant moms. Like, you just have to scroll through hashtag plant help on Instagram to understand how many crying for help moments there are. Now, it's not just one, ah, and it's done. It's actually 30 five shrieks per hour. Now, if you've put your plant through a drought and you've forgotten to water it, that's 35 shrieks per hour until you water it. That, my friends, is terrifying. So I actually took the time to look up this article because that's the beauty of having gone to university, you have access to resources like this. So I looked up the actual paper and science has explained it. These plants actually do shriek. And that to me is mind blowing. I'll put some figures up on the screen just to show you kind of in summary what's going on here. So we look at photo A and it's showing us exactly how they had it set up. There's two mics per box, meaning they accounted for electronic failure. So if one mic cut out or one mic malfunctioned, the other one would be able to catch either no sound or the same sound. Now to dig a little bit deeper, we can look at graph B. And what's happening in this graph is very common when it comes to any sort of scientific literature. What we're doing is we're looking at different controls and then the actual experiment. So the first three are controls. The first one being just the pot itself to see if there's any sort of electromagnetic movement or sounds coming from the pot that they were gonna use. Then they took those pots and they planted, they planted two plants, one in each pot one was their control that they were going to put through no pain and the other was the plant previous having its leaf cut or being exposed to drought. As you can see, there are no sounds coming out of that plant, but the fourth one 
In this case is the tobacco plant that has been exposed to cutting and drought. <laughs> and it wasn't making a sound before, but now it is. And it's not making a little bit of a sound. It's literally screeching like they said. So in this case, this creepy crawly is actually creepy and makes my skin crawl anyways. So you might be asking what exactly is going on inside the plant. So we'll get into the plant science of the experiment and what exactly is going on. When a plant is touched, whether it's by little caterpillar feet or our hands or cut, as in the case of this experiment, calcium is released. Once this calcium is released, it triggers a release of glutamate. Glutamate is an amino acid that is able to be transported through the plant cells. It goes in between the plant cells on kind of a green highway, what the veins are in the cell, but on a molecular level. This glutamate release then triggers defense hormones. These defense hormones then rush back to the place that was touched and the plant emits what it needs to to defend itself. Now, some plants have developed poisons that either kill or the bug or animal that's chewing on it, burn its skin, or simply taste bitter. In other cases, they may release a sap that then coats your hands and causes an irritation. But in some cases, response is to scream. So you might be asking, well, why is the plant screaming? I get sap and I get poisonous juices, but why are they yelling? And while the article I read by the Daily Mail and another one that I wrote read by some science magazines suggests that they're trying to alert other plants of the nearby danger, I am going to dispute that and probably say that's not the case. Plants don't have legs. <laughs> they can't run away and they can't defend themselves or put up a fight. So while I don't think it's to signal other plants, I do think it acts similar to something like those electronic mouse traps you can plug into your wall. It's going to emit a signal that is irritating to the predator. That irritating signal may not stop the one munching on your leaves, but it could prevent a swarm from happening on your limbs. Now, the fun fact about this is that there's an actual application to this plant science. It's not just plant science. For fun, to figure out if plants scream or not, there is something called precision egg. And in this case, from what I read in this study and peer reviews done on the study, it sounds like they're going to be using this in a way to enhance precision agriculture. So. If we know that the plant is going to be put in a drought area, what we can do is we can actually genetically modify the plant to maybe lower its sound. <laughs> if we lower its sound, then we might reduce the stress that's put on all the other plants around it, therefore not stunting potential growth. If we tell you the plants everything's hunky-dory, they're more likely to go on and grow big, strong, green leaves. The opposite is true if you know a plant is susceptible to pests. If you know the ultrasonic frequency in which a pest doesn't like, you can then engineer that into the plant itself. Therefore, an entire crop shrieking on the top of its lungs every time a Bertha armyworm starts munching away you may not have many Bertham armyworms wanting to eat that crop. Now, while before you say that this is completely impossible and beyond science to be able to genetically modify a plant in this way, I would like to prove you wrong because they actually, for this study, before they got into the ultrasonic sounds, made a plant that had higher calcium in it. That calcium injection or infusion into that genetically modified plant then allowed them to see how calcium reacted when the plant was exposed to stress. Now on our level as gardeners and people that just enjoy house plants, it is important to note that this does tell us something. We now know that just simply 
touching our plant leaves is less than ideal. If we wanna reduce the stress on our plants, we wanna reduce the exposure they have to being touched. That means wiping down plant leaves every week because you need to dust is less than ideal. Same with touching the bottoms of the leaves. That is probably the biggest no-no I could ever recommend. The reason being is not only do we now know that they scream in absolute terror, but they also have organs on the bottom that we don't want to smoosh. <laughs> That's for another video. So what do you guys think? What do you think is actually happening here? Put it down in the comments below. Do you think that plants are screaming at your house? And do you kind of feel bad now or? <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this, be sure to give it a like and tap that subscribe button. I do gardening tips, houseplant tips, and of course, creepy crawly videos. Now, if you do hit that like button or leave a comment below, a plant will get its wings. I promise. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you guys next time with a plethora of videos. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're freaked out, I am too. I'm going to go water some plants now.